So we want to prove that the Lorentz system is chaotic, but that is not so easy. What we're going to do is simplify things and then prove chaos in a more limited version of the Lorentz system. And what we're going to focus on is that attractor. That is going to be our target, that thing that all the orbits seem to accumulate on. Now, that is going to be our chaotic invariant set about which we want to prove that the definitions of chaos hold. So what is that attractor? We should go back and examine the things that we saw when we did a simulation. Lorenz originally noticed, everyone notices, that it seems as though everything is accumulating onto a two-dimensional surface, but it's not quite a normal surface. It's kind of unusual. It's kind of weird. How do we make sense of that? How do we turn that into something that we can prove theorems about? What we're going to do is come up with an approximate system. In the late 1970s, John Guggenheimer, Bob Williams, came up with what they called the geometric Lorentz attractor. And this is a surface, but a branched surface, by which I mean there are these two-dimensional sheets that fuse together along a branch line. Now, this branched surface has a flow on it, or more correctly, a semi-flow, because you can only go forwards in time uniquely, not backwards in time. So around the left, you're flowing around the left of this hole, and on the right, you're flowing around the right of this hole, and you can see the vestiges of the saddle equilibrium down at the bottom of this branch surface. And you can see what has happened is those two spirals on either side have been blown up to boundary curves, to periodic orbits of the semiflow. This is admittedly a little bit difficult to see unless you actually get out some paper and, and sort of cut pieces and uh, pull it around and glue it together along that branch line. But with a little bit of visualization, you can see what is going on in this almost cartoonish model for what this geometric Lorentz attractor is doing. Now, you've got to imagine the flow lines on this going around to the left, going around to the right, and then they fuse together, and then they go back down. That saddle point separates them out, and they just churn over and over and over. Now, this is not the full Lorentz system. This is just an approximation to it, but it's still useful. Why? Because this is something that we can work with without having to deal with the differential equations and trying to find all the periodic orbits and all the things we need to do. Now, we notice a couple of things immediately. First of all, this system does have two periodic orbits. One that goes around the left on the inside, the other that goes around the right on the inside. Now I wonder what else lives on that surface. It's going to depend on what exactly is happening with this flow. That is going to be the thing that we investigate next. And what we're going to see is that this reduction to this geometric Lorentz attractor allows us to prove everything that we want to prove.